Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about refining of crude oil and the fractional distillation process. Now let us discuss about the petroleum. The largest source of liquid fuel is nothing but petroleum. It is also called as mineral oil. The petroleum products are obtained from refining of the crude oil. So crude oil is nothing but a dark greenish brown or black viscous and inflammable liquid oil present in the earth's crust. Crude petroleum is nothing but a mixture of various hydrocarbons, generally alkanes. The alkanes and other than alkanes, we have cycloalkanes, we have uh, aromatic hydrocarbons present in that, okay? Benzi benzene, toluene, naphthalene, etc. Generally, olefins and acetylenes are absent in crude oil. That is, alkenes and alkynes are generally absent in the crude oil. And during the processing of petroleum, the olefins are formed. Now, let us discuss about refining of crude oil. The crude oil obtained from the earth's crust is refined by generally three steps. The step one is separation of water. So for the separation of water, we generally use a Cottrell's process. The crude oil, which is nothing but an emulsion of oil and salt water is allowed to flow between two highly charged electrodes. The colloidal water droplets will combine to form bigger drops and it will separate out from the oil. After that, we go for the removal of sulfur compounds in the step 2. The sulfur compounds can be removed by treating it with copper oxide. This sulfur compounds will react with copper oxide to form copper sulfide which is nothing but a solid which can be removed by the filtration process. The third step is the fractional distillation. For the fractional distillation, we have a column. Let us discuss the, it in detail. It has different trays, chimneys, we have downspot, we have different fractions coming out uh, with the help of this uh, fraction distillation. So let us discuss about how this process takes place. The crude oil that we get after removal of water and sulfur compounds are heated to about 400 degrees centigrade temperature. So uh, by heating at 400 degrees centigrade, the asphalt and coke will remain as residue and all the other constituents will get volatilized and this is passed into this fractionating column. The fractionating column is nothing but a tall cylindrical tower. This contains a number of horizontal stainless steel trays. You can see these are the stainless steel, stainless steel trays. Now, the tray is provided with a small chimney and it is, this chimney is covered with a loose cap. See, we have so many chimneys here. So this is covered with a small loose cap, small chimney and it is covered with a loose cap. When the vapors rises up in the tower, they become cool and condensed because of the interaction with this loose cap. The compounds which are having higher boiling points will be condensed at the lower part of the column and the one which is having lower boiling points will be condensed and separated at the higher part of the uh, the top of the tower or the uh, upper part of the tower. Now let us discuss the products. What are the products at what boiling range we are getting these products? You can understand it from this uh, table given. So see these are the gases that is the uncondensed gases which will have a boiling range of less than 30 degrees centigrade and it will have 
very lower number of hydrocarbons around 1 to 4 number of carbon atoms and it is generally used as LPG. The next constituents that we get is petroleum ether at a boiling range of 30 to 70 degrees centigrade and this will have 5 to 7 carbon atoms as a in the hydrocarbon as a hydrocarbon the solvent it is used as a solvent for extraction and it is used in the dry cleaning process also even the gasoline will have around 5 to 7 hydrocarbons and it will have a boiling range of 40 to 120 degrees centigrade and this is generally used as automobile fuel and even it is used in the dry cleaning process the next constituent that we get is naphtha. Naphtha will be getting separated at about 120 to 180 degrees centigrade. That is the boiling range is 120 to 180 degrees centigrade. And it will have more number of carbon atoms. Around 10 to 16 will be the number of carbon atoms. And respective hydrocarbons will be the mixture of hydrocarbons will be there in the kerosene. And uh, it is used as domestic fuel. It is used as aluminum, jet fuel, etc. The next constituent that is getting separated out is diesel oil. So we are getting so many products by the fractional displacement. So this diesel will have a temperature range of uh, the boiling range of 250 to 320 degrees centigrade. And the number of carbon atoms will be around 10 to 18. And it is used as diesel engine fuel. The, at 320 to 400 degrees centigrade, we get heavy oil. And this heavy oil is used to make gasoline by the cracking process, which we have already discussed in the previous video. Now, the boiling range is 320 to 400 degrees centigrade and it will have more number of carbon atoms C17 to C30. And this on further cracking, this heavy oil can be uh, further fractionally distilled and we can get different products like we can have lubricating oil, we can have Vaseline, grease, paraffin wax. Lubricating oil is used as lubricant, Vaseline is used as cosmetics and even it is a medicine. Grease is a lubricant, paraffin wax is used in the candles and boot polishes. The asphalt and coke which is left out above 400 degrees centigrade will have large number of carbon atoms that is more than 30 in number. Now, the asphalt is generally used for road making, waterproofing okay, of the roof, etc. And the petroleum coke is used as fuel and even it can be used as electrodes. So, all these fractions, so many fractions we obtain from the fractional distillation process of petroleum and all the individual product have different applications. That's all for today. Thank you.